Hi guys, it's Tim from Launch Press A Digital Marketing. And in today's video, I'm gonna go a little deeper on how to set up your GTINs or UPCs in the Google Merchant Center next. And the reason why is because I had a great question in my comments of one of my videos asking, how do I navigate a situation where only 5% of my products in the Merchant Center does not have a GTIN? Because I can't use the rule in your video, most of my products have a GTIN. In my previous video on how to add GTINs and MPNs to your Google Merchant Center, I only cover how to set up and identify exist as false, as you would have been receiving a limited performance warning due to missing identifiers, either a GTIN, MPN, or brand. So it required attention. So how do we then blend not having a GTIN and also having a GTIN, just as I was asked by Joshua. And before I take you out of my screen and show you how to do that, if you are having ongoing issues in your Google Merchant Center, for whatever reason that is affecting your Google Ads, or you're simply looking for help on optimizing your Google Merchant Center and your Google Ads to position them for scaling, please reach out in the link in the description below or the first comment, and I'll be happy to take a look to see how it can help. And with that said, let's head over to my screen now. So firstly, let's cover what a GTIN number is. It's a global trade item number, also known as in the US as a UPC. And if we take a look at the Google documentation here, you can see the different types of GTINs that are available, UPC for North America, EAN for Europe, JAN for Japan, ISBN for anything to do with books, and also the ITF 14 number four multi-packs. And as we scroll down, we can see here, typically this is what it will look like for the US in terms of a barcode or a GTIN. Now, if you are receiving that GTIN warning and Google has identified that you do require a GTIN number, the best thing to do is to reach out to the manufacturer or if you're a drop shipper, reach out to either AliExpress or whoever's doing your fulfillment for you and request that GTIN to be able to add to the back of your Shopify or e-commerce store. Now, it's important to note that don't just go on any random number in the back of your e-commerce or Shopify store in an attempt to get rid of this warning. It's important to have the right GTIN or UPC because that indicates to Google how to categorically promote your products within Google Shopping Ads or free listings via the Google Merchant Center. Also, you don't want to be going and buying any random GTIN numbers because they could be assigned to other products, which could cause you more problems in the Google Merchant Center and your e-commerce store in general. And you also don't want to be buying a GTIN number unless you are the manufacturer or the owner of that product. Usually you would buy those barcodes through the gs1.org website, which I'll leave in the description below. It may be completely unnecessary for you to do. That said, if you're producing custom products, you may not require a GTIN at all. And you can state that in the Google Merchant Center that your particular products have not been assigned a GTIN. So it's important to have those set up correctly in the Google Merchant Center. So if we come across to my Google Merchant Center next account for my test Shopify store, cheapcampinggear.net, just quickly coming back to the overview screen to show you how to navigate to where to set up the rules and conditions for whether you have a GTIN or not. So coming across to the left-hand sidebar here and click products, then click under view data sources here, or you can also come to the top right-hand corner and click data sources. They take you to the same location. Then under your primary sources, usually it would be a content API. You click inside here and then come to your attribute rules. We can see where I've set up previously the identify exists set to no because this is a test dropship store. However, I too do have GTIN numbers that I do need to include within my Shopify store. And I do need to go back to the manufacturers through AliExpress in order to request those GTIN numbers and optimize my products correctly within Shopify and the Google Merchant Center. Now for demonstration purposes today, I'm just going to delete that original rule because I'm going to start again. And then I will need to click apply. So it completely removes it. And then I'll click add attribute rule. It comes up with a drop down on process attributes or custom process attributes. I will select the process attributes. Firstly, we'll pick GTIN. So just type in GTIN and select it. And firstly, we want to cancel the data source because we want to make a modification. So we'll click add modification. And to edit the modification, we need to click edit here under the conditions. And then we select GTIN again, GTIN API. So if the condition of the content API.GTIN does not match a regular expression like so. And then we click to add a value, paste it inside the box here and click enter and click on the actual value itself. So it is added as a value like so. We can thank our friends over at Feed Army for providing that little snippet there, which represents a regular expression for any numbers of 12 to 14 characters within a barcode. Once we've clicked that value, so the attribute value has been added correctly. Then we come to selecting how to modify the attribute data. So we want to scroll across all the way to the right and we want to clear that data. This will remove any random numbers from the feed that is not either 12 or 14 characters. 
And the reason we do this is because sometimes the GTINs are invalid and random numbers could have been added to the Shopify store via the feed. So clear out any invalid numbers that may have been added. It's just a little fail safe. And once you've completed that, click OK. And then we want to save that as a draft. OK, so then we come to add attribute rule again and we want to select the MPN this time. And under process attributes, click the MPN. We want to cancel editing the data source again. We just want to make a modification and we need to edit that condition. And under the conditions for select types, we want to select the G10 again under the processed attributes. Then we want to select has no value. And then we want to clear it to ensure that clearing to delete the attribute, you might have had to click on the advanced section just before that in order to be able to modify that attribute data. And then we click OK. So this rule is in place to clear any G10 data out of the MPN as well. So if it's been added in there, it will completely remove it. There's another fallback. We'll OK that and then we will save that as a draft as well. And then again, we need to do this for the brand value as well. So we select brand under process attributes. And again, we want to cancel editing the actual data source itself and just add in the modification. Let's edit the conditions on that. And we select again the G10 process attributes. And again, has no value. We want to clear it. So make sure we select the advanced operators here and scroll across to and select clear and OK that. Save that as a draft. And the last attribute rule that we want to add is for the identifier exists. So we select identifier exists. We do want to edit the data source and replace the attribute data. Let's select the condition to edit and we select identifier exists. And from here, we need to select G10 process attribute has no value. And then we want to set it to no. And we add the value no like so. And then we OK that and then save as draft. And now just double checking our the attributes that we have in draft at the moment, the brand, the G10, the identifier exists, and the MPN. And then we just click apply. From here, if you're using a content API, it might take up to 24 hours for the feed to update. If you're using a delimited text file or an XML or a Google Sheet, you may need to go fetch now in order to get those feeds updated. Although under the Google Merchant Center Next, I have not seen a fetch now feature. So if it hasn't updated within 24 hours, I would be looking getting on to Google support. And that's how you quickly set up the identifier exists and GTINs for products that don't have the correct GTIN number added. But also, if you do have the correct GTIN numbers, how you can tell the Google Merchant Center that you don't have GTIN numbers for some of your products. And if you've been getting value of this video, please follow along to stay up to date with any of my future videos that I've been putting out. And remember, don't forget my offer about helping you out with your Google Merchant Center and your Google Ads. And please stick around and check out the end of this video. I do have something for free to give you that will help you boost your average order size with your Shopify store. And with that said, thanks for watching. Bye for now. If you'd like to boost sales in your Shopify store by increasing your average order value size, check out this link in this page here in the description below. And you're more than welcome to download my free PDF here on how you can implement those strategies for your store. And I'll have to keep an eye out for my course that's coming up. I'll be sharing all my SOPs in there on how you can set up Google Ads for Shopify and more. And that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video.